excuse me, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're running a little bit late. Uh, however, I just wanna take the opportunity before we call this particular meeting, uh, the regular session of the Orange County Legislature uh, to order. I would just like to congratulate the students that were here with us this morning. Uh, for those of you that uh, did not have the opportunity to join us, and I see most of the students were able to stay, it was a very lively, intelligent, knowledgeable discussion, and I thank them all for participating. And with that, I would ask that you please silence all your cell phones and any electronic devices you may have, and please join me in standing for the Pledge to the Flag, being led by the student chairwoman of the Orange County Legislature, Molly Finn from Cornwall. Molly, I'll put the mic on, hon. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Molly, and you did an excellent job. Along with our legislator moderators, Janet Sutherland, Legislator Sutherland, and Legislator Robert Sassy, who, how many times have you been doing this, Rob? 30. You don't look that old, bro. <laughs> but thank you so much. It was really a very lively dialogue, and I personally enjoyed it very, very much. Uh, at this point, we will take the roll call. So, Jean? Beggio? Here. Paduk? Here. Amo? Nagnostakis? Benton? Here. Cheney? Here. Ellers? Here. Feller? Here. Hines? Here. Lujan? Present. Menuda? Here. O'Donnell? Ramos, Ruskevich, Here. Sassy, Here. Sierra, Steganga, Here. Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Benelli. 18 present. present, three absent. Thank you. Um, we do have some presentations this morning. Uh, at this point, uh, first, I'd like to call up our county clerk, the best county clerk in all of Orange, uh, all of New York State, Kelly Eskew. <laughs> And we are celebrating a 30-year employee, Donna Cool. Donna, would you join us up here? And I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask that Ron Feller, who is the legislator, he doesn't know this yet, but <laughs> if you would like to join the county clerk up at the podium there for the presentation of Donna's 30-year pin. Thank you, Ron. Okay, Donna, I just want to thank you for your 30 years of service to the county clerk's office. You have been an outstanding, hardworking, committed, dedicated worker. You have been a mentor to people that have come after you. I'll never get a 30-year plan, <laughs> but I'm so happy that you are. Congratulations, and I know you're coming to the end of your career with us. I'm sorry to see you go, but this is a great culmination for that, so thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we do have a few other proclamations today, and that's why I have to bring the paper up here, and I see my partner in crime, County Executive Steve Newhouse is with us this morning. Thank you, Steve. And we are here today, which is something that we've been doing. Um, this is my 15th year in the legislature, and every month, every uh, April, we celebrate or recognize Autism Awareness Month. So today we have with us Christine Smallin, who is the Director of the Developmental Disabilities Program Services for Orange County Mental Health. 
And if you'd like to join us up here, you're more than welcome. And Stacy Orzel, representing the families affected by autism in Orange County. Stacy, you can join us as well. And the proclamation, Mr. County Executive, I believe, is the big one. Yeah. How's this one? Oh, we got two of them. Oh, okay. It's all yours, babe. So I'd like to bring up Gary and Eva. They are, uh, Gary is the county executive, and uh, Eva is the deputy. Come on up. You guys can hang out with us. Uh, since it's Youth and Government Day, this is a great opportunity to spread awareness to some of the things that the legislature and the county executive and all our commissioners and departments are doing and our partners in the school districts. And uh, obviously, we're going to have Stacy up here, which we all look forward to every year. She's very shy. Uh, so we, we have to encourage her with a lot of clapping, uh, but I'm sure she'll be able to address us. Um, I just want to say uh, Gary is from Warwick, and I see the mayor is here of, of Village of Warwick. I was with him earlier this morning. And uh, we also, Eva is from Washingtonville. So uh, welcome to you both. So for decades, autism has really been uh, really nothing that we've seen in society. It's been individuals dealing with it and uh, trying to survive and walk through it. It's only until recently that all different uh, aspects of our society are starting to recognize what we need to do to embrace people with autism, welcome them, and give them opportunities. And it's really uh, been, uh, been uh, spearheaded by two different uh, avenues, in my opinion. N number one, the parents. And you're going to hear from Stacy advocating and advocating and advocating for their uh, sons and daughters to make sure they got everything they have and the opportunities that other people in our society have. And the other ones is our school districts. We have m wonderful counselors and school districts that have, have really welcomed and helped us develop as we uh, grow as a nation uh, to really accommodate everybody and welcome everybody. So I'm super proud to be here with not only my, my fellow representatives as county executives, but also with the legislature, uh, the chairwoman, uh, Katie, who's absolutely wonderful in our legislature. We always look forward to this every year. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Stacy. So again, she's shy. Walk her through it. Stacy, come on. Deep breath. You got it. It's the red hair. I just want to invite my students up. I'm here also representing the SUNY Orange Bridges program. And my director, Ms. Lisa Hayes, please join us. They, thank you. So like Steve said, I'm kind of shy. She texted me Not really. times last night. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Stacy Orzel, and I'm always honored to join you in celebration of Autism Awareness Month. I volunteer advocating and educating families in our community. As most of you know, I wear many hats. Proud mom is first. It feels like yesterday when Jason was in fifth grade over at the Emergency Services Center accepting this proclamation from you, County Executive. Thank you. Always been a great mentor for both my boys. Jason is now in college. Wow, he's a junior, and he's gonna become an earth science teacher. Many of you have followed him over the years, so I like to just put in that anecdote. He's been an amazing big brother to Eric, so I like to say out loud, it's so important to create unified opportunities when we're including siblings in activities, plans, job opportunities, and just really anything. If the sibling is available, open the doors and see about welcoming what could be a unified opportunity. Eric has autism. He's doing amazing at Goshen High School. Just finished as a stagehand for SpongeBob the Musical at GHS. If you missed it, look up the video. It was amazing. He works hard and he'll be a senior next year. <sighs> wow. I'm a proud coach. This is my 10th year leading the New York State Special Olympics swim team. It's competition season and our team is making waves. Very exciting. West Point in about two weeks. I'm a proud county partner. I'm one of the founding members of the Orange County Think Differently Committee. Thank you, Nikki, Christine, and Bernie are all here representing the committee. Where's Miss Christine? She had a seat, she's hiding. She's not as shy as me. Um, my newest hat of two years, and maybe to date my most proud, is that I'm the career and internship advisor for the SUNY Orange Bridges program. 
I outreach to community partners such as yourselves to consider employment opportunities for all individuals who may work or learn differently. As a mission of Orange County Think Differently, we say to fulfill the promise of a community where all people can fully participate, are valued for their unique contributions, and can achieve their dreams. I like to say, your difference is your greatness. We all have strengths and skills and talents. Today, I'm proud to be here with SUNY Orange Bridges Director Lisa Hayes, and five of this year's graduating students from the Bridges program. It has been my honor leading all of you through this school year. And now I'm sure you'll all really appreciate getting to them, know them just a little bit. Hi, my name is Colin, and I'm interested in pursuing a career in computer technology. I'm dedicated to learning new things. I'm conscientious and have excellent time management skills. My internships are on campus at SUNY Orange in Middletown. I work with a dental clinic weekly learning clinical skills. I also work in the campus bookstore. My mentor is Kobe Bryant, and I've been a Lakers fan since I was very young. I had sat on the court for the New York State Special Olympics basketball volleyball team, often scoring three pointers. Unified basketball starts this month. We welcome you to come see our games. Great job, brother. Hi, my name. Hi, I am Nathan, and I hope to pursue a career working with animals. I've been a volunteer at the Green Road Nature Center since 2021. I have three internships in our community. I have developed hospitality, clerical, stocking, and social skills. I work weekly at the Promenade Senior Center in Middletown. I work for the dental clinic on campus in Middletown. I also work at Goshen Pizza stocking and folding boxes. I have a passion for the NFL and baseball. I also enjoy trivial game, creating trivial games in our classrooms. Hi, my name is I'm Lilioni. I am interested in pursuing a career using clerical skills. I have two internships, one on campus and one in our community. I have been learning clerical skills for SUNY Orange Dental Clinic. I also work at Happy Beauty Yoga. I have assisted with setting up and cleaning up for classes. I also help with office work and cleaning in studios. I've been volunteering at Winslow Center since 2010. I love horses. I train and compete with New York State Special Olympics, track and field, basketball and CrossFit. And I especially enjoy camping and traveling with my family. Hi, my name is Lauren, and I'm interested in pursuing a career in the human service field. I am a hard worker, a good listener, and I am patient. I participate in improv and theater at SUNY Orange in Middletown. My public speaking and self-confidence has really grown. Recently, I joined Families Together in New York State as a youth advocate. I have three internships, SUNY Orange Dental Clinic working on clerical skills, St. Paul's Methodist Church Food Bank serving folks in our community, and I work as a teacher assistant with Holistic Imaginations, helping with art and music workshops. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, my name is Tyler, and I am interested in pursuing a career in early childhood education. I have learned that applying my art talent at Inspire, where I am an intern, has been very rewarding. <sighs> I have taught the children how to draw a shark, elephant, horse, and a rabbit so far. I participate with the Apprentice Players Club on campus at SUNY Orange in Middletown, and I have a passion for theater. I enjoy Japanese anime, and I hope to travel to Japan one day. Akira Toriyama is my mentor. May he rest in peace. I can draw and paint freehand and use graphic design. Thank you for your time. So these are a sampling of the young men and women that are impacted by Stacy and all the folks that are involved in Think Differently in our education system. If you go to our SUNY Orange graduations every, every year, you'll get to see some of these phenomenal people walk across the stage, get a diploma, and go out into society and be productive members of our community. It's absolutely phenomenal. It wouldn't happen without people like you and all the folks that are here to support it today. And uh, Katie, you want to say any more remarks before we close? Does this work? OK, it does work. Just thank you so much. Stacy. you and your group are absolutely phenomenal. That was a, you guys were all wonderful. And I applaud all of your efforts. And it was wonderful to listen to you tell us a little bit about yourselves. And we, us yeah. we wish you the best as you continue in the next chapters of your life to make things even better for our world. Thank you so much. And thank you, Lisa. It's great to see you. <laughs> we have our top of the OK, all right. Wait, Stacy's back. I'm playing the role of county executive. Wow, this is a big moment. Autism Awareness well, Month. Easy. Usually he reads a few. Have, I can have him, Gary read it. Yes, please. Thank you, Gary. you go, Gary. You go. You signed up for it, buddy. All right. Yeah. This is your leadership moment, yeah. buddy. However, awesome. Bear with the mic if it doesn't work. County executive starts reading glasses, but I left my reading glasses, so you're it. All right. They might want you back. Yeah, you could just do the, this is the proclamation and say where I sure. Yeah, you're good. This is called a filibuster. Filibuster. All right. All right. Whereas autism is reported to be the fastest growing and second most common development disability in the United States, affecting thousands of people in New York State, and whereas Center of Disease Control states that one on only 36 children are affected by autism, boys four times more likely to be affected by the disability than girls, and whereas the individuals affected by autism will continue to need specialized support and services throughout their lifetime, and whereas it is vitally important that initiatives relating to autism spectrum disorders be supported and enhanced to promote community integration that includes meaningful activities such as recreational, spiritual, volunteer, and vocational opportunities for individuals with autism and their families. Okay. All right. Back to you, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Just, just a group pic. I don't have my huh? anymore. We're good? Photo? Okay. We're now ready for the group photo. Or unless you have any more remarks. No, no, we're good. Okay. Okay. All right. Can you check? Can you check? Chair, woman, come on over here, Katie. A lot of paparazzi. Thanks, Mary. Pat. Thanks, Mary. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? Right? Stacy, thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's great to see you again. Always. Thank you for all your support ongoing. You know, when there's a question, you guys come to the plate with a yes, I can mindset, and that's what we need. Thank you. Thanks again, guys.
All right, we're going to see if this mic holds out here. All right, we do have another proclamation, and this is something for not just the Warwick community, but uh, all of Orange County to be proud. So at this point, legislators Paul Ruskevich and Barry Cheney, if you could join me up here, along with Orange County, uh, Orange County Arts Council member Johnny Wesley Kruger. Kruger, I'm sorry. <laughs> Johnny, it's great to see you as well. How are you? Nice to see you. It's great to see you. Can I say something? Sure. We, we wait for the legislators. While we wait for the legislators to join us, we would also like to bring up two of the other representatives of the board of the Orange County Arts Council, past president Janet Howard Frada, and I know, and Marsha Talman. <laughs> so the three of us represent the Orange County Arts Council, and um, Janet is here as, be, as a past president to deliver some remarks when we're ready. Thank you so much, and I'm going to turn it over to Legislator Ruskevich. I'm sorry? Oh, all right. Let's present okay. to them when they come back. Sure. All right, thank you. Well, it's, a, it's an honor um, for us today to present a very uh, important proclamation, as Katie said, not only to the war community or the Orange County community, but the arts community as a whole. Uh, we have a uh, a local artist, um, uh, Robert Whitman, uh, who unfortunately um, passed, but we're here today to honor um, all the contributions that he has made to the uh, to the arts community. Um, this is kind of lengthy, I don't want to read the whole thing, but I want to uh, read some of the highlights. Um, this is a proclamation of the legislature of the County of Orange honoring the memory of Robert D. Forrest Whitman Jr., avant-garde performance and multimedia artist. Whereas we, the Orange County Legislature, are proud to acknowledge the lifelong work and endeavors of Robert Whitman, who was a pioneer of performance and multimedia art. And whereas Robert Whitman was a resident of Warwick, New York, and was born on May 23rd, 1935, and sadly passed away on January 19th, 2024. He studied literature at Rutgers University and art history at Columbia University in 1958. And whereas in the late 1950s, Mr. Whitman was among a handful of young New York artists who helped create a new form of temporal art, which became known as The Happening, which grew partly out of expanded ideas about painting, particularly embodied by the works of Jackson Pollock. And there's a number of other whereases. And then we get down to, uh, you know, listing numerous accomplishments of Mr. Whitman. And um, now therefore, it is hereby proclaimed that this be a day of recognition of the achievements and to honor the memory of Robert DeForest Whitman Jr., an Orange County resident, so that all citizens of Orange County may be mindful of the extraordinary talent and contributions he has made to the arts within our region, nation, and abroad. And it is further resolved that this proclamation be spread upon the records of this body as a permanent memorial, as an enduring standard for its members and for all citizens, given this fifth day of April, 2024. So, well, yeah. Thank you. Um, just a few brief comments. Um, in addition to the proclamation, I learned uh, quite a bit more about him through Mayor Michael Newhard, who's here today and who, who knew him. and. Uh, he was a contributor to the community and especially to the Arts Council. So um, I just uh, applaud what he's done for Orange County. I'll turn it over to Janet. Yeah. Hi. Hi, I'm Janet Howard Fata, uh, Vice President of Orange County Arts Council. On behalf of Orange County Arts Council Board of Directors, it is both an honor and a solemn privilege to accept this proclamation of honor in memory of the late Bob Whitman, a truly remarkable contemporary artist whose legacy will forever enrich the cultural landscape of our community. Bob Whitman was not just an artist, and he was a visionary whose work transcended boundaries and challenged perceptives, sparked conversations that resonated deeply within our society. His work spoke volumes about the human condition, capturing the essence of our time with unparalleled insight and creativity. 
And as we stand here today and mourn the loss of a true artistic genius, but we also celebrate the enduring impact of his contributions to the world of art and culture. Bob Whitman's legacy will continue to inspire generations to come, reminding us of the transformative power of creativity and the boundless possibilities of the human spirit. So on behalf of Orange County Arts Council, I'd extend a heartfelt gratitude to the esteemed members of the legislature for recognizing Bob Whitman's remarkable achievements and for honoring his memory in this meaningful way. May his legacy continue to shine brightly and illuminating our hearts and minds with the beauty and power of art. And I'd like to acknowledge here um, Bob Whitman's wife, Julia, and his daughter, yes. Pilar, and this Marcia Talbot, uh, and her husband, which I don't see, Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan over there, also a colleague of Bob Whitman, and Michael Newhard, mayor of Warwick. I know Bob lived in Warwick as well. Does um, Pilar, you want to say something? <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, I'm just very grateful about all this. I think it's quite wonderful. Some of you probably didn't know Bob very well, but he was something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, it's delightful to be here, and I want to thank you all. That's all I have to say, really. You want to say something? You want to say something about Bob? There are no words. <laughs> Bob was a remarkable spirit and an incredible artist. And for him to have landed in Orange County was quite a treat for all of us who knew him. And he did wonderful things in his life, and he shared those with everyone he met. And um, that's what artists do. They pollinate, cross-pollinate, and make the world a better place. And thank you, Bob. Nice. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all for joining us. And while I did not have the pleasure of meeting Bob, obviously his legacy will live on in each and every one of you. And with the Arts Council recognizing this as well, I think that we're in pretty good hands here. So thank you so much. And thank you to our legislators from Warwick who are bringing this to the attention of the entire legislature. So we can pause in our deliberations on a monthly basis and really pay some tribute to a wonderful man and talented. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. All right, take care. had an earthquake. It was 4.8 on the Richter scale. It was, the epicenter was Lebanon, New Jersey. I know the school districts are worried about what happened. Um, right now there's no significant damage at all, um, but we are asking everybody to just continue operations. So all the schools, we're not evacuating. It's not the eclipse. It has nothing to do with Jimmy O'Donnell or me or anybody else. So just everybody, just anybody's getting these messages, there was no significant damage. I think that was Bob. I think it was the, the, I think it was our proclamation with Stacey Orzel that would happen. Well, it's good to know that this building is very sound, because I don't know about you, but I didn't hear anything, I feel anything, so that's a good thing. All right, let's get back to our deliberations. Thank you so much. All right, so that was earth-shattering news. Thank you. Uh, 
At this point, so I can take a little bit of a breather, Majority Leader Fagion, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the legislature would like to uh, recognize the following for the month of April. April is National County Government Month, National Parkinson's Awareness Month, National Volunteer Week is April 21st through the 27th. The U.S. Prevention of Animal Cruelty Month is April. It's National Donate Light Life Month. And Earth Day is April 22nd. And uh, just as a point of order, Madam Chair, we have uh, so many of the students who took place, who took part in the Youth in Government program. And I just want to remind them as we get ready to deliberate and vote on the matters here before us, as per our, our county uh, legislative manual, when we are asked to vote up here, you may hear the names called, but some people may not answer in a yes or a no. And it is our policy and our manual that will allow a silent vote to go off as a yes. So when you hear the roll call taken, if someone doesn't say anything upon the calling of their name, that vote is considered a yes. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, and thank you for that clarification. Uh, all right. Do you... Oh. Public participation. We don't have any public participation. Okay. Um, also, Majority Leader Fagione. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to approve the minutes of March 7th, 2024. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you for that. And again, Majority Leader Fagione. Thank you, Madam Chair. I request consent to be placed on the agenda the following. A resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation to submit an application to and receive grant monies awarded from the New York State Department of Health for the Statewide Healthcare Facility Transformation Program 4. Second. Okay, if there's no objections, the consent order will be added to the agenda as item number C-1. Okay. And at this time, we will start our agenda. So we have our recognition. So what about that one? Okay, so A, we have the Orange County District's Attorney Annual Report for 2023 that is received and filed. And then we have B1, uh, this comes out of the Personnel Committee as well as the Labor Relations Advisory Committee. And uh, so I'll have Jean read the resolution. Legislators Benton, Fagione, Lujan, Paduk, Staganga, Sassi, Hines, Ruskevich, and Tartell, and all Republicans as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the making of a stipulation of agreement between the County of Orange and the County Employees Unit of the Orange County Chapter of the Civil Service Employees Association, Inc in relation to the terms and conditions of employment pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law, known as the Public Employees Fair Employment Act. Second. Okay, questions or comments? Roll call, please. Fagione? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Yes. Hines? Lujan? Yes. Menuda? Yes. O'Donnell? Ramos? Riskevich? Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vanelli. 18 eyes. Okay, and we move on to B2. Legislators Benton, Fagione, Lujan, Paduke, Staganga, Sassy, Hines, Ruskevich, Tautel, with all Republicans as co sponsors. An act amending Act Number 22 of 1971 as last amended by Act Number 6 of 2019 by substituting new salary schedules therein applicable to all employees of the County of Orange who are included in the negotiating unit represented by the County Employees Unit of the Orange County Chapter of the Civil Service Employees Association, Inc. Second. Questions or comments? I would just like to say on both of these particular resolutions, I'd like to extend my thanks to uh, our um, Human Resources Department led by Director Langdon Chapman and also to the union representatives who have been working on this contract. And uh, just moving forward, I would like to thank them for their cooperative efforts to bring this forth here today. And before I do a roll call, I think I saw a hand back there, Legislator O'Donnell. Thank you, Chairwoman. So uh, I think the last sentence of this reads that uh, pending the uh, final count of the vote of the CSEA, which I think has already been taken, 
That is correct. I'd just like to know when that is finalized that we get sent an email. We can request that, yes. Right, the tally is, even though we're told it's overwhelming. Sure. It would be nice to know as soon as everybody else knows. Okay. Thank you. Be happy to have that happen. Let me just write it down. Okay, and now we have roll call. Feggio? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Yes. Hines? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ramos? Riskevich? Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli, 18 eyes. We move to C1. Legislators Fagione and Miskevich with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation to submit an application to and receive grant monies awarded from the New York State Department of Health for the statewide health care facility transformation program for. Second. Second. Questions or comments on this? Okay, roll call, please. Faggio? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Benelli, 18 eyes. Okay, and we move to number one, please. Legislators Fagione, Cheney, Hines, Sutherland, Riskevich, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county attorney to commence litigation in opposition to the recently enacted state legislation requiring elections of certain county elected officials to be held in even numbered years. No. I apologize. No Democrats as co-sponsors. I'm sorry. Majority Leader Fascio. Okay. I thought, oh, Legislator Ramos, I knew I saw a hand. <laughs> Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, so this, uh, this lawsuit is a complete waste of taxpayer money and resources, especially when Onondaga and Dutchess counties are also filing suit of the very same nature. Therefore, Orange County is really only trying to assert themselves by doing this political partisan lawsuit that only Republican legislators have signed on to. A county charter does not preempt the state constitution, plain and simple. This bill changing odd election years to even election years was because Governor Hochul signed legislation on December 22nd, 2023, which amends Municipal Home Rule Law 34 and Town Village County Law, moving most town and county odd year elections to coincide with federal and state even year elections. County executives and county, ledger, county legislators are included in this law. Other offices, such as county sheriff, county clerk, district attorney, to name a few, are exempted from this particular law solely due to the duration and timing of these offices being articulated within the state constitution and thus not being immediately changeable in the statute. However, additional legislation is being introduced within the state legislature to amend the constitution accordingly. By signaling an intent to litigate, Orange County is taking its cue from other Republican-led counties who plan to waste taxpayer resources in an attempt to block this voter engagement measure, which has overwhelming and bipartisan support amongst constituents, election officials, and elected representatives alike. This is a clear attempt to advance and prevent, to, to prevent constituents from making their voices heard at the polls. Even your elections would actually save taxpayers money and has proven immense success in other states, such as Texas, where in El Paso, elections moved from odd to even years. The voter turnout jumped from 8% to 45%, a 460% increase. Therefore, I am strongly opposing this resolution and waste of taxpayer money. Thank you for your comments. Legislator Ruskevich. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, I, uh, this um, came out of the Rules Committee, uh, which we had a very lengthy discussion, and our county attorney, I think, gave a very good explanation uh, for the reasons of the lawsuit. Um, the primary uh, reasons, one being not only that it does violate the state constitution and uh, uh, with respect to home rule, uh, but also violates our county charter by um, creating a three-year term for legislators rather than a four-year term. 
Uh, if we were to change our charter, that would require a countywide referendum. Uh, so it's, uh, I think, very inappropriate for the state to step in and uh, do something like that. And it would not save taxpayers money because we still have to have even year elections for some of the other offices uh, that are exempt. So I am in full support of this and I want to encourage my colleagues to be as well. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Lujan. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I just want to say that year after year, we have, we have seen um, how, how so many of our community members have, have been coming out, especially for, for uh, you know, local elections. There are so many hot topics. And I, I know a lot of people have talked about how that local elections would be hurt by, by them being the same time as federal elections. The reality is that, that the data is clear. Um, we, we are seeing um, so, so significantly less numbers of individuals coming out um, in, in, in odd years. And, and we really want to make sure that, that you know, countywide elections that are so critical, so critically important. Local elections are so important. Um, but so oftentimes we're not seeing the turnout that we sh should have. Um, we are your representatives. Um, individuals here who, who are voting or will vote, um, are, are, we are your voices. And so for us to see the, the numbers being significantly lower in odd years, uh, means that you're not being represented. Um, we're also seeing that that oftentimes due to, to odd years, um, we see less polling locations. That is That, that also reduces the voter turnout. Um, making sure that we are having even your elections for, for such important elections as, as county office and local elections, I think is going to drastically improve for the representation of in our entire communities across New York State. I think it's also pivotal, and, and I, I disagree with the, 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 the fact of the, the comment that it's not going to reduce taxpayer money. Every single year, we have to put, put more money um, to make uh, polling locations. And, and to the point I made earlier, we actually end up having less people come out. We need to do more. We can do better. Um, representation matters. Um, making sure that you have a voice matters. Um, and, and, and the state's position on doing this is, is, is absolutely geared towards improving representation. And I hear everyone talk about fiscal conservatism. This will actually help and benefit um, our taxpayers. And again, representation is the most important thing here. Thank you. Okay, I have Legislator Hines. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, keep in mind, this is another mandate from Albany. The same people that brought us bail reform, increased crime, inflation, leaving less money in our pockets, higher taxes, out of control spending. And as was already pointed out, it's against our charter. New York is a, a home rule state and we should set the elections for uh, the county as we do now because we are a home rule state. Uh, it's not gonna save anybody a dime because as was pointed out, the uh, sheriff will still be elected in an odd year, as would uh, county clerks and, and the other examples that were given. So we're having the same elections either way. So to say that it's going to save money is disingenuous at best. Uh, this is another mandate from Albany politicians to help themselves. Please vote for this litigation, and hopefully we can win it. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Tautel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd just like to point out that even though we are a home rule state, our local rules do not preempt state law. And the offices that uh, Legislator Hines mentioned and was previously mentioned also by Legislator Ramos are also being looked at to be voted on uh, to the Constitution of you know, New York State. However, our offices as legislators and also the Office of the County Executive are not covered under that constitution and are then party to this law that was signed into effect by Governor Cuomo. And I will be in support of this because more people pay attention to what is happening as on the national level, as much as it behooves me, because what is happening on the local level here in your county and in your towns and in your villages affect you directly on a daily basis more so than what happens at the federal level. So I want people to, to understand that what happens here is a direct correlation to what happens to your pocketbook, your property, and your taxes every day, every year. And as, thank you. Thank you. Legislator O'Donnell. Thank you, Chairwoman. So as you can see, you should have had this instead of cyberbullying you would still be up here debating it. All right, this is Albany uh, putting uh, legislation down the throats of not just this county, every county, without doing all the homework. All right, you've heard already, uh, 
elections for the district attorney, elections for the county clerk, county executive, might be one or two other offices are not included in this. So as Legislator Hines said, you're not saving money, okay? But you're probably right on the Democratic side, you will get more people voting, all right, if you put it all together. So there's pluses and minuses in both. But for us on an individual local level, right, all of us here, when we run for election or re-election, we go out and we knock on 2,000 doors at least, all right? That's the local face-to-face, -face, all right? We get to say what the big local issues are. So one of the downsides to this is we get lost in the shuffle of presidential elections, senatorial elections, House of Representative elections. So there's a lot to say about keeping the local elections local, all right? There's arguments on the other side for sure. There's some cost savings, and there's also more people will vote, right? But to lose that local level of getting your points of view across, not being lost in the bigger national picture is very, very important to the local people. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you. Legislator Cheney. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, point out I serve on two levels of government here in uh, Goshen as a county legislator, but I'm also um, a trustee in the village of Warwick. And so I see firsthand um, the issues and the importance of these races being determined on the basis of people, the voters, understanding the local issues. And I think that by putting this to an even year, we're running the risk of having the local issues overshadowed by what is heard on out of the media, CNN, Fox, it just overwhelms things. Local issues get lost. And my fear is that good people who are doing good jobs with local issues may not survive an election. And uh, that would be our loss. Thank you. Thank you, Legislator Cheney. Legislator Menuda. Thank you, Chairwoman. So I wholeheartedly agree with uh, Legislator Cheney on his uh, view of this. I also like to point out, uh, I've heard representation today. Well, it's your representation is based on the attendance of your representatives. So when that is lacking, how much representation do you actually have to the public? Um, also, I heard about money and it being a waste of money. Uh, in my opinion, it's not a waste of money to balance the constituency that we represent who is opposed to this legislation. So those are my thoughts on the subject. Thank you. Thank you, Legislator Menuda. Anyone else? Legislator Fagion, Majority Leader Fagion. Uh, you know what? I'm going to pause for a second and let everybody. Thank you all so much for participating and enjoy the rest of your day for youth and government. We appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. I'll just give them a minute to clear the room. You have to wait longer now. <laughs> Okay, Legislator Fagione. Majority Leader Fagione. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just moments ago, it was mentioned that April is National County Government Month. County government, this is what we're here for. We represent our communities here in county government. I would like to remind this county government that we have statutory committees. And this item passed unanimous with bipartisan votes of yes in the Rules Committee. It's become quite apparent that county government, the respect and the appreciation for county government is not shared in Albany the way it's shared here and across county governments here in New York State. Through excessive mandates and overbearing meddling with the duties and responsibilities county government has with its people, the elites in Albany think it's their job to decide what's best for Orange County citizens. The county charter, our county charter, clearly states the roles and responsibilities of this body. In fact, section 2.1, county legislature, membership election term. There shall be a county legislature comprised of 21 legislators elected from the various districts within the county as established by local law. Each legislator shall be deemed a county officer 
and shall be elected from his district at a general odd numbered year election for a term of four years, commencing the first day of January next following his election. That's our charter. That's the charter of Orange County. Moreover, this county charter enumerates certain powers, duties, and responsibilities that we have been bestowed by the people of Orange County to deal with, including section 2.02, .02, the county legislature power and duties, which enumerated includes the county legislature shall have the power, among others, in letter D, to exercise all powers of local legislation in relation to enacting, amending, or rescinding local laws, charter laws, legalizing acts, or resolutions. You know, Mr. O'Donnell, Legislator O'Donnell mentioned knocking on 2,000 doors. I'm very blessed and lucky to have a good rapport with my community in Port Jervis and in the town of Deer Park. I go and I talk to people all the time. And when we talk about the issues, I can guarantee you not a single person in Western Orange County said to me, yeah, you know what, man, we got to have a three-year term or we got to have a four-year term. They're talking about crime. They're talking about inflation. They're talking about excessive taxes coming out of Albany. Mr. Minuta knows they're talking about potholes across state roads here in our county. What they're not talking about is something like this. Before us here today is a resolution affirming the role and responsibility of all of us, of each of us. This resolution supports our positions as county legislators and that of this entire legislative body. We have been freely elected to represent our communities and our county to the best of our abilities. We're also responsible. Yes, we as a legislature, we are responsible for the rules, the roles and obligations of this county government. This resolution speaks volume to the excessive power grab we've seen far too much from Albany. Supporters of this resolution stand up and will support the same words that we read all the time in the opening of the Constitution. This puts we the people first over politicians who are making deals in Albany. Supporting this resolution is a visible sign to all county residents and all state officials that here in Orange County, we trust the people of Orange County. I ask my colleagues to work relentlessly and make sure that it is the voice and the will of the people of Orange County that matters most, not some slick political moves from a bunch of out of touch Albany elites. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Baggio? Yes. Paduk? No. Nanak Nastakis? I'm sorry. Benton? Yes. Bettini? Ellers? Feller? Yes. Hines? Lujan? No. Menuda? Yes. O'Donnell? Ramos? No. Ruskevich? Yes. Sassy? Yes. Staganga? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Tortell? No. Tui? Yes. Benelli? 14 eyes. Four no's. Okay. We move on to number two, please. Legislators Faggione and Cheney with all Republicans as co-sponsors. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2024 Orange County budget for the county attorney's office to be used for outside council fees pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? Please commence the roll. Faggione? Yes. Padu? No. Benton, Cheney, Ellers, Feller, Hines, Lujan? No. Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, no. Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, no. Tui, Benelli. 14 ayes, 4 noes. We move to number three, please. Legislators Faggione and Paduke with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Office of Assigned Counsel to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Office of Indigent Legal Services for the second Harrell Herring statewide grant pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments, Legislator O'Donnell. Well, there it goes. So. This uh, came up a couple of years ago where we had to actually create the uh, Office of Assigned Counsel. Uh, it's nice that the state is sending us down $23 million, part of their commitment, but we also remember that it doubled the amount of money that we put in. 
right? We went from, I think, four and a half million to almost 10 million. And that will only grow in the next 10 years as you see the crime rate going up from the people coming into this country, not the millions and min millions of good people trying to find a better life, but the thousands and tens of thousands of criminals sneaking through that come with no money and bad intent. And this is the people that are going to defend them. It's costing each and every taxpayer in this county double what we used to pay three years ago. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you, Legislator O'Donnell. Anyone else? Okay, roll call, please. Baggio? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ramos? Ruskevich? Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. Okay, we move to number four, please. Legislators Paduke and Amo with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to apply for a federal transit administration grant that is apportioned to Orange County via the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll ask the roll to be called. Faggio? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton, Cheney, Ellers, Feller, Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. Okay, we move to number five, please. Legislators Cheney and Faggione with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to appropriate funds from a previously accepted Federal Transit Administration grant pursuant to Section 99-H of a general municipal law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, roll call, please. Agione? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. With that, we move to agenda item number six. Legislators Amo and Cheney with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to appropriate funds from a previously accepted Federal Transit Administration grant and to apply for, accept, and appropriate further grant funds pursuant to Section 99-H of a general municipal law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Any questions or comments on this one? Okay, so when you're ready, we can call the roll. Agione? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers, Feller, Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. Okay, item number seven, please. Legislators Paduke and Cheney with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to apply for a federal transit administration grant that is apportioned to Orange County via the American Rescue Plan Act, pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, roll call please. Faggio? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller, Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. We move to number eight. Legislators Cheney and Amo with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to apply for a federal transit administration grant 
the matching New York State grant and a local match for the capital cost of contracting and to purchase transit vehicles pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter and assuming lead agency status under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEQA, with respect to the purchase of transit vehicles, classifying the action as an unlisted action and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, go to the roll call, please. Faggio? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. And we move to number nine. Legislators Hines, Paduk, Benton, Lujan, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Department of Planning to increase the budget of capital project number 542 to reflect revenue received from the auctioning of buses pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, the roll call, please. Faggio? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ramos, Ruskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 eyes. Number 10, please. Legislators Benton and Hines with all Republicans as co-sponsors. Resolution to accept and affirm the fund balance policy for the County of Orange. Second. Questions or comments? But, uh, Minority Leader Paduk, please. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, there's some current concerns that I have in regards to our fund balance policy. Um, as it states in it, I'm sorry, I didn't put my glasses on. It says the, uh, to maintain an unsigned, unassigned fund balance of no less than 10%. I'd like to make an addendum and make it the no maximum of 10%. All right, we have a proposal or an amendment on the floor. Is there a second? second. All right, we have a second. Uh, discussion on the amendment and the amendment only. Hearing no discussion, we'll take a roll call on the amendment. Uh, you want to clarify that once again, Mr. Paduk, just so everybody... Yeah, I'm asking uh, in the fund balance policy. Actually, so. uh, you might want to... We should be referring to the page and every... I'm actually looking at the policy. Uh, exactly. Page three. Saying. Page three of the fund balance policy. It says the county will strive to maintain an unassigned fund balance of no less than 10%. I want to change the no less than to a maximum of 10% of the general fund regulating, regular operating expenses. So you're talking about the very first sentence on the top of page very first three, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, is it anywhere else in the document, are you aware? Just so we can uh, make it correct, so everybody understands. Main, maintaining 10%. Well, that's all in the same... I'm talking about the first paragraph. Madam Chair, let's have a clarification on, on this policy. When can this policy be changed? Uh, Mr. Benton, would you please just put your mic on? Because I don't think anybody heard you. That'll probably be discussed after this. Uh, this policy is flexible. It could be uh, amended at any time, go through the com regular committee process as an amendment. It could be done next month. It's expected to be reviewed possibly at this upcoming budget time this fall, uh, specifically next. It's not carved in stone. No. Thank you. No, it is not carved in stone. And it was our understanding at the meeting that uh, since the 2023 books aren't even closed yet, the auditors are currently here working as far as that's concerned. So we are going to be reviewing this entire thing once again, probably at the end of the summer, beginning of September, before budget time. So that was the intent that I took away from the meeting, uh, Ways and Means. And I believe Mr. Benton is concurring, so. All right, uh, no further questions then. Uh, Betsy, do you wanna clarify what exactly 
people would be voting on as far as this amendment? Sure. So it would be to change the language of that particular section, noting that the county will strive to maintain an unassigned fund balance of a maximum of 10% of uh, general fund regular operating expenditures further down under the fund balance for punishment as well. I believe that that would also require a change to the last bullet point that states that the county will strive to replenish the maximum unassigned fund balance within one to three years of falling below uh, a 10% of annual operating expenditures. And uh, to the extent that anything was missed there, um, in line with what uh, Minority Leader Paduke notes um, repeatedly, it, it, would, it would note uh, the maximum of 10%. But I believe those are the two specific sections. I see that our Commissioner of Finance, Carrie Gallagher, is in the audience. Did you want to speak to this at all, Carrie? You don't have to. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Legislator Cheney. Thank you, Chairwoman. I just would like to point out, and I'm sure we're going to get into this discussion further on as we consider this motion, um, the amendment that's been suggested would, I believe, put us in a very precarious position relative to what the rating agencies are looking to see. Um, they've asked for 15%, another one 30%, and if we were to do a maximum of 10%, it wouldn't demonstrate a strong financial position on the part of this county. So I'm going to be voting uh, against the amendment. Thank you. Anything else? Mr. Paduke. Let's just keep in mind, it's always our, our we considered seven, <clears throat> excuse me, 7% to be the maximum. 10% is a pretty good increase, I would say. And what that does actually is let the, let it go to where it is now. I don't even know what the percentage is, but it's huge right now. It's way over 10%. So the fact that we aren't taking our responsibility, why aren't we giving money back to the taxpayers? You know, instead of just saving it, that's what we're doing in, in for future needs. We've been doing that for quite some time right now. Now is the time to make it a maximum of 10%. Uh, I, I don't, we don't have an issue with our bond ratings, it, like, like you said, Mr. Cheney. Not yet, no, and, and I don't think, think we will have at a 10% rate as well. So. Uh, it's my opinion. I think I'm real strong about this. I talk about this all the time. Our fund balance is exorbitant. Uh, we should be giving money back to the taxpayers, not seeing how else we could use it. That's my opinion. Thank you. I believe, Legislator Feller, you're, Feller you had your hand raised. I did. I, I can't see dropping the fund balance to possibly 2% by this amendment. I'm opposed to the amendment. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? All right, so the vote is on the amendment and the amendment only. Roll call, please. Baggio? No. The Duke? Yes. Benton? No. Cheney? No. Ellers? No. Feller? No. Hines? No. Lujan? No. Minuta? No. O'Donnell? Yes. Warmos? Miscavige? No. Sassy? No. Staganga? Sutherland? Yes. Sotel? Yes. Tui? No. Benelli? No. Motion fails. Three ayes, 15 noes. Okay, it's back to the resolution as presented. Any further comments? 14. Legislator O'Donnell, did I see a hand? 14. Four to 14. You're 14? 14. What did you do? Three noes. Three ayes. Three 15 no's and three. I mean, three, three eyes, yes. What do you have? 15 no's and three. There is four. Absent. There was four. There's three absent. What, what did you say? It was 14 to four, right? The only eyes were Paduke, O'Donnell, and Totel. Correct. Correct. Uh -huh. There's three eyes. I tried to vote twice, Mike. They wouldn't let me. <laughs> Don't confuse us. <laughs> Did you have your hand raised? I I Someone's screwing around with my mic here trying to cut me off, but it's failing. So back to the uh, original. All right, I said right from the beginning, this is bad policy. So I'll be voting no 
I do want to thank uh, Legislator Hines for reducing it from 15% to 10%, which is a lot more uh, uh, agreeable to uh, the taxpayers. However, the policy on my initial uh, complaints about it, it didn't state one of the options was reducing taxes. It didn't state one of the uh, options was layoffs. And the second time around, they still were left out of the policy, all right? Uh, and what really bothered me the most was that uh, the language about us being mindful, I take personally that I'm always mindful of every vote I take, as is every other legislator here. I took that personal and that language is still in there. So I'm glad that we're gonna revisit this at the uh, Ways and Means and at budget time. And I'm sure there'll be new language in there that we can agree on. And again, thank you to Legislator Hines to reduce it to 10%. There was a lot of talk about the professionals saying we needed 15 to 30 as Legislator Cheney has said. I'll just remind you that all those professionals are for profit, all right? The one professional that is not for profit is the controller who refuses to weigh in on this. And he controls all of your future pension money, my current pension money, and he is the professional. The other non, uh, the other uh, for profit professionals, just like I as a police officer, you as an engineer, others as an architect or a school teacher or a doctor, they all carry personal liability insurance or malpractice insurance for giving out bad advice or doing what turns out to be the wrong thing. Even though at the start, it might look like it's the right thing. That's the reason they carry insurance because they make mistakes, all right? And, uh, one big mistake that was made by uh, the former attorney over at the IDA, right? We recovered 400 grand from his insurance company. So the professionals might give us advice, but it's not always right. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else? Majority Leader Fagion. Thank you, Chairwoman. I just want to compliment our Commissioner of Finance, uh, Commissioner Gallagher, who's in the audience right now. She's been a, a true professional, and uh, the proof is in the put pudding here in Orange County government. The government is strong. The financial position of Orange County government is strong, and it's through her leadership and the leadership of the county executive and Madam Chair Benelli, in which the county government is in a strong position, and I ask all my colleagues to support uh, this endeavor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Fagione? Yes. Paduke? No. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ramos? Ruskevich? Sassy? Staganga? Sutherland? Totel? No. Tui? Benelli? 15 ayes, 3 noes. Okay, and we move on to number 11, please. Legislators Benton and Fagione with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution approving the release of the county's interest in and to a certain detail parcel to previous owner of record pursuant to section five, paragraph B1 of local law number two of 2010. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, roll call, please. Fagione? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers, Feller, Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. Okay, number 12, please. Legislators Menuda and Tortel with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolu resolu I'm sorry. Resolution acknowledging the election of an additional 
I'm sorry, <laughs> start over. Resolution acknowledging the election of an individual recommended to be appointed to the Beaver Dam Leak District Advisory Board and appointing the same as a member thereof in accordance with Beaver Dam Leak District election results pursuant to resolution 280 of 1988. Second. Questions or comments on this? Hearing none, roll call please. Fagione? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller, Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Griskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. Okay, we move to agenda item number 13. This is a bond resolution. Therefore, it will require a two-thirds vote. Legislators Menuda, Tautel, Benton, and Cheney, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors, Bond resolution dated April 5th, 2024. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the construction of various drainage improvements, stating the estimated total cost thereof is 300,000, appropriating said amount therefore, including 200,000 to be received from the state of New York and authorizing the issuance of 100,000 bonds of the county to pay the balance of the cost thereof. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Fagion? Yes. Paduke, yes. Benton, Cheney, Ellers, Feller, Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. Okay, agenda item number 14, please. Legislators Riskevich, Menuda, Benton, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co sponsors. Amending bond resolution dated April 5th, 2024, amending the bond resolution adopted April 8th, 2016, in relation to the replacement of Gardnerville Bridge in the town of Minisink. Second. Questions or comments? Again, this does require a two thirds vote. All right, roll call, please. Fagione? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell, Ramos, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. Okay, we move to number 15, please. Legislators Hines, Ellers, Sutherland, Sassy, Ramos, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution confirming the appointments and reappointments by the county executive to the Orange County Fire Advisory Board pursuant to section 18.07 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? On behalf of the legislature, I would like to thank these individuals for serving on this advisory board. They give up a lot of their time and some of them have been there for a while and then we do have some new ones. So uh, welcome them all back on board and uh, thank them for their service. And with that, roll call please. Edgio? Paduke? Yes. Benton, Cheney, Ellers, Feller, Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Riskevich, Sassy, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. Number 16, please. Legislator Sassy and Sutherland with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services for the Radiological Emergency Preparedness Grant pursuant to Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? And this could be a voice vote. So having heard no questions or comments, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion is carried. And we move to number 17, and that will be a voice vote as well. Legislator Sassy and Sutherland, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Probation to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services for pretrial services funding pursuant to Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion is carried. And we move to number 18. Legislators Tui, Tautel, Benton, and Fagione, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors, 
bond resolution dated April 5th, 2024, bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of pa passenger vans for the Office for the Aging, stating the estimated total cost thereof is 159,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 159,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Questions or comments? Just to note, this does require a two-thirds vote since, this, since it is a bond resolution. And with that, roll call, please. Fagione? Yes. Duke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ramos? Riskevich? Sassy? Steganga? Sutherland? Tautel? Tui? Benelli? 18 ayes. Okay, we're on number 19, please. Legislators Amo and Sutherland, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors, resolution calling for, this, calling for the state fiscal year 2024-25 enacted budget to include reforms for determining the capacity of a defendant to stand trial. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Maggione? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Riskevich, Sassy, Steganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Benelli. 18 eyes. Number 20, please. Legislators Tortel and Tui, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Mental Health to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Office of Mental Health as part of the Mental Health Outpatient Treatment and Rehabilitative Services Clinic Enhancement Grants Access and Capacity Enhancement Program, pursuant to Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? Uh, hearing none, this is a voice vote, so all in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion is carried and we move to number 21. Legislators Sutherland and Tautel with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Mental Health to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Office of Mental Health as part of the Mental Health Outpatient Treatment and Rehabilitation Services School-Based Mental Health Services for Children Youth Program pursuant to Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? And this is also a voice vote, so all in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion does carry. And we move to number 22. Legislator Benton, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors, resolution approving the applications for the correction of certain errors appearing on the 2024 tax rolls for certain towns and districts and ordering the correction of said errors pursuant to Section 556 of the Real Property Tax Law. Second. Questions or comments? Uh, this is a voice vote as well. So hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion is carried and we move to number 23. Legislator Benton with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution approving the applications for the correction of certain errors appearing on the 2024 tax rolls for certain towns and districts and ordering the correction of said errors pursuant to Section 556 of the Real Property Tax Law. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion does carry, and we're up to number 24, please. Legislator Steganga and Lujan and Legislator Ruskevich with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing Orange County Community College to develop and implement one-time voluntary early retirement incentive plans between the college and both the Orange County Community College Faculty Association and the Staff and Chair Association of Orange County Community College. Second. Questions or comments? I would just like to recognize Mr. Paul Martland from the college. He's always here to be able to answer any questions we may have on the resolutions being put forth by the college. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. And with that, roll call, please. Baggio? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? 
Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Riskevich, Sassi, Steganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. Number 25, please. Legislators Fagione and Minuta with all Republicans as co-sponsors. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing the Orange County Department of Human Resources to charge a $25 fee to persons who fail to appear for a civil service examination for which there is no exam fee without canceling at least one week in advance. Questions or comments? I'm sorry. Second. Sorry. Thank you. Hearing none, roll call, please. Fagione? Yes. Paduk, yes. Benton, Cheney, Ellers, Feller, Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Ruskevich, Sassi, Steganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 ayes. And we move to number 26. Legislators Lujan and Steganga with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to remove stipulation from Public Health Fellow 1 and Public Health Fellow 2 positions until the start of the first full pay period of July 2025 at the Orange County Department of Health, pursuant to Section 2.02L of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, roll call, please. Faggio? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers, Feller, Hines, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ramos, Riskevich, Sassi, Steganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Benelli. 18 eyes. Okay, number 27, please. Legislators Steganga, Lujan, Paduk, and Fagione, with all Republicans and all Democrats as co sponsors. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create senior account clerk and abolish reproduction technician at the Orange County Clerk's Office pursuant to Section 2.02L of the Orange County Charter. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call when you're ready. Fagione? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ramos? Ruskevich? Sassi? Steganga? Sutherland? Tautel, Tui, Benelli, 18 eyes. Number 28, please. Legislators Lujan, Fagione, Benton, and O'Donnell with all Republicans and all Democrats as co-sponsors. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create fiscal technician at the Orange County Department of General Services pursuant to Section 2.02L of the Orange County Charter. Second. Are there any questions or comments on this one? Roll call then, please. Fagione? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Ellers? Feller? Hines? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ramos? Ruskevich? Sassi? Steganga? Sutherland? Tautel? Tui? And Benelli. 18 ayes, Madam Chair, and the desk is clear. Uh, is there any public participation?